playing with the cut your face. Connor has the puck. In a great time. One year back up. And that's his score. There it is. All the water gets the first score of the And welcome back to an all-new Black Red Blitz. As always, I'm your host, Rebecca Cameron. Well, on this episode, it's all about the girls. As both hockey and basketball look to continue to keep rolling over their competition, the deeper we go into this season. Now, last Saturday, girls hockey would once again face off against the Walpole Rebels. Now, these Raiders, they hate to lose. That's a guarantee. But back in December, when Walpole scored the game winner with seconds to spare, well, it might as well have been a couple of sucker punches to the gut to this team who prides themselves on defense. Well, here we are late January, and the Rebels are back. And you can just feel an extra level of confidence in these Raiders even before the opening faceoff. And in its first period, Walpole quickly finds out this sure ain't the same team they beat just a month ago. So, in this first, Raiders mean business here. Amy Dorr collects the puck along the boards. Dorr sends it to Bridget Noonan. Noonan fires from the circle and goes five-hole past Francesca Bonanno. And the freshman gives Raiders a quick one nothing edge. Defensive end turnover here is taken care of single-handedly by Alyssa Semino as you see the puck disappear in between the leg pads. But Semino lays down a vice grip that isn't going to let that puck see any of that net. The Rebels are denied a score. Having junior captain Phoebe Lawrence back in the lineup has just been fantastic. Don't believe me? And go to a game then and try to prove me wrong. Or just in general, go to a game. Defensive circle, Elise Coakley pokes away the puck right to Phoebe Lawrence. Lawrence flies through the neutral zone. Cameron Johnson, she ain't stopping her. But really, come on, who is? Lawrence snipes it far down like a boss. 2-0 Wellesley, and that was a sweet goal. But it's not all good here. As minutes later, Raiders lose a key player and captain, Mamie Dorr, whose knee takes an awkward hit to the boards. Forced out for the rest of this game, it's tough to see that on the ice. Well, we're all hoping still for a quick recovery right now here in this game. How about the next score goes for Amy Dorr? Let's put this game away for the captain. Wellesley does just that. Phoebe Lawrence one-ups her first goal with an even better breakaway. Lawrence feeds the puck ahead to hit the boards, catches up to her herself, and meets up with Cameron Johnson. Hey, Johnson, remember last time? Yeah, don't even try. Phoebe Lawrence buries the wrister glove side for the unassisted score, just made a two-goal Rebels deficit even bigger, just like that. Goalie Francesca Bonanno has been pummeled with shot after shot after shot. But you gotta admit these next two saves are pretty awesome. Sprawling here is Grace Dorr, who is absolutely ready to bury that putback. And an even better stop here, somehow Bonanno gets the block out on Olivia Vernon's shot, but Bonanno's long night in net drags on as Wellesley still leads 3-0. Raiders dominated defensively as well, leaving very few chances for Walpole. But when the Rebels did look ready to strike, Alyssa Smina was just waiting to turn any shot down, even at point blank. Nope, nothing is finding that net tonight, that's for sure. Great play here by Mackenzie O'Neill as she wins the battle on the boards. Puck gets to Emily Rourke. Rourke also has to fight off a defender and still somehow feeds the puck to Bridget Noonan. Who buries the wraparound goal for her second goal of the night as well. 4-0 Raiders in command. There would be no last second game winning dagger here by Walpole as well. Also, you would have to score, which the Rebels did not. There was an extra fire lit in these Raiders tonight as this convincing win would especially feel good. As well as they dominated behind Samino and Nett and two outstanding goals each by Bridget Noonan and Phoebe Lawrence would easily help Wellesley shut out the Rebels four to nothing. Fast forward to Tuesday night for girls basketball. Back for another Bay State Conference battle. 
this time Wellesley would tip off against the Norwood Mustangs. Now this Raiders team quickly forgot about their second loss of the season at Newton North last week with a shellacking of Walpole in a road doubleheader on Friday night. Now in that loss, Tigers defensively shut down Wellesley's high-powered defense. But the offense would be back on track at Walpole, looking fantastic, and earn a spot in the tournament. And on this night, it's cold and snowy outside, but here in the gym, Raiders would be on fire from the very start. It's all Wellesley here in this opening first quarter as Dorian Cohen starts things up. Brooke Wifrey trains five quick points of her own, which kickstarts a Raiders edge early on. And a sweet move to the basket in between two defenders by Kelsey Zaro quickly makes it 11-5 Wellesley. A fantastic Brooke Griefrey bounce pass to the cutter. Kelsey Zaro gets an even better finish with Zaro sinking in the floater right here. And the lead is already at double digits, 17-7. Brooke Griefrey continues to be a big factor here, scoring 10 points just in this opening quarter alone. Raiders are outplaying, out-hustling, out-working the Mustangs. That's for sure. Dorian Cohen finishes off this lights out first with two more solid points. As 24 team points will be buried in these first eight minutes alone. Here in the second, Caitlin Shaughnessy looks to get Mustang's sputtering offense somewhat going here. And Shaughnessy drives in the lane here for some much needed points. A crisp passing along the perimeter by Wellesley here finds Kelsey Zaro low post. Zaro dishes it to Dorian Cohen for the sweet layup. It's just perfect timing on that score. It makes it 28-11 Wellesley. Dominating in the paint. Well, just makes the points keep coming. So Dorian Cohen having a solid game here. Getting 14 points in this first half. There's about a minute left though to this second. Norwood is looking for any momentum before halftime. Try captain Krista Bradley baseline finds Kaylin Reed wide open in the corner. Reed drains it from downtown. But 30-14 is still the Mustangs deficit here. Raiders then close out this near perfect first half with this play. Kelsey Zara's floater misses, but Leo Sperling is there for the rebound, takes contact, and still banks the putback off the glass like it's no biggie. Sperling's first two points of the game couldn't have come at a better time as that shot pretty much drop kicked any hint of momentum for the Mustangs. And it's a tough walk back to the locker room, down by 20. Honestly, Mustang season so far has been tough. Losing their 1,000 point scorer and senior captain, Megan Reed, for the year. But they have looked to others to step up, like Kaylin Shaughnessy, who here gets fouled, makes it in one. And it's a three point play to open up this third that Norwood desperately needed. But that's about it for any good news for Norwood, as it's hard to spark a huge comeback. Wellesley's offense just never slows down. Kelsey Zara whips it ahead to Brooke Guifrey. Guifrey to Leo Sperling, a fast break finish. That play took seconds. How do you even stop that? So this third would also be Brooke Guifrey time. After scoring 10 quick points back in the first, Guifrey would heat up once again. Then just as soon as Mustangs get the deficit a little bit lower, and I'm being nice here because they're still down by 19, Dorian Cohen kicks it out to Brooke Guifrey. Guifrey buries a deep tray to make it 50-28 Wellesley. Mustangs would be coming back from this one. Raiders outplayed the Mustangs, pure and simple, in every quarter. And behind Brooke Wifrey's team high 18 points, Dorian Cohen right behind her with 16 of her own. On this night, Wellesley's offense was as close as you can get to unstoppable. Raiders easily speed past Norwood for their 11th win on the season, crushing the Mustangs by the final 61-39. to After shutting out Walpole in a solid victory, Next up, girls hockey would have the winless and struggling Norwood Mustangs next on their list of teams to beat. In case you didn't know, since their 2-0 loss to Needham back on January 9th, since then, the Raiders have gone 6-0-1. Even more fantastic, the Raiders have outscored their opponents 25-6 in those seven games. So once again, Thanks, Nina. Because you again lit a spark in a team with three solid lines that just keeps grinding on the ice.
with any player on any given night determined to step up. So the Raiders gets things going their way already in the opening period. D.B. Lawrence's solid wraparound try gets stopped by Janelle Kelleher. Lawrence scoots out the puck in the slot and kicks it back out to Olivia Vernon. Vernon winds up and fires a high floater from the point, sails past everyone and in. And the Cousins connect on a fantastic play as Olivia Vernon gets the top shelf score. The assist goes to Phoebe Lawrence. It's a 1-0 lead already. 5.04 left in the first offensive zone faceoff. Melissa Nauman takes it away in the slot. Nauman's clear out at the boards gets picked off by Kathleen Crozier. Crozier's shot gets blocked out, but a Mustang's clear out fails again. Phoebe Lawrence steals it out the circle, flips the wrist to home, finding the back of the net for the unassisted score. And this 2-0 Wellesley lead forces a timeout by the Mustangs already. Still holding a two-goal advantage as we head into the second period. Well, that quickly changes here for Wellesley. Sometimes you get to watch a play go down where you just can't help saying, whoa, oh my god. Well, this would be that kind of play. Olivia Vernon collects the puck all the way in the defensive end, digs past two separate defenders, flying through the neutral zone. I pass the puck when you know you want to see a fantastic coast-to-coast -coast finish right here. Olivia Vernon buries her second goal of the night. And you know when your defenseman scores two goals in the first two periods, you are definitely doing something right as a hockey team. And the Mustangs deficit just got deeper, down three to nothing. This exciting second continues as Elise Coakley patiently waits, looking for the cutter. And from the slot, Devin Chapman goes stick side, bearing Coakley's centering pass. And that is a dagger right there. Wellesley holds a commanding four nothing advantage. And a Raiders game wouldn't be complete without something funny going down or maybe a call that makes you go, what? So let's check in on two of those plays that actually happened back to back. I guess goalie Janelle Kelleher is getting sick of stopping shot after shot. Because on this rejection, why not hide the puck up in Kylie Venterose's back brace on this stick save? What? I don't have the puck. Wait, let me check. Oh, I do have the puck. My bad. Seconds later, Kat Donahue falls down, gets a stick to the face mask, and trying to get back up on the play, I guess has to make her stick suddenly disappear in thin air so Allie Martin doesn't fall down. Because a penalty is called, and it goes against Kat Donahue? But what do you expect Kat Donahue to do with her stick while laying flat out on the ice? Sorry, but I don't think a stick can be hidden in Ventro's back brace, too. Just saying. Thankfully, Raiders take care of the penalty kill, and the shutout is intact. So the Raiders would control this game on both sides from the opening faceoff. And Wellesley easily takes this one too, shutting out Norwood 4-0, improving to 9-2-3, and, and oh yeah, clinching a well-deserved tourney spot. So get used to these smiling faces, because this team is just getting started. Well, that does it here for Black Bread Blitz, but look for an all-new episode coming next week. Don't miss out on any exciting games or highlights, so make sure to check us out on demand at wellesleymedia.org, our YouTube and Facebook pages, Wellesley Public Media, and of course, right here on Comcast 9 and Verizon 39. Thanks for watching Black Bread Blitz. Go Raiders!